Columbia Kids, it's Miss Rachel here with you for another Bible lesson. Before we get started, though, I've got a couple of announcements. You know my announcements probably by now, <laughs> but I like to repeat them just in case you don't know them. Our Columbia Kids YouTube channel is up and running. You're probably on it right now, and hopefully you you are a subscriber, and you're getting um, updates for whenever we get a new video. Um, and uh, staying up to date with what we're doing. So uh, we also have our Columbia Kids Instagram and Facebook pages, great tools for your parents or guardians to keep um, updated on what we are doing in Columbia Kids and um, to be encouraged because I like to put different um, encouraging verses up and just different information that I find. Um, so yeah. Also, our Columbia Kids Bible study happens every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. And it is through Zoom, so if you would like to be a part of it and are not yet um, signed up for it, ask your parents or guardians to sign you up on the church website, or they can contact me directly by telephone, text, or even email. So, And they can find all that information online as well. So hopefully, uh, if you're not yet joined with us, you will soon. We're going to go ahead and pray together and get started, okay? Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you, God, that you are Lord of all and that you hear us when we pray. Lord, help us to listen um, to these words today and be changed by you. Amen. Alrighty, guys, so last week, well, we've been talking about what it means to be a prayer warrior. Prayer Warriors is our series. And last week, we talked about praying honestly. And we learned that it's important to be honest and direct when we pray for what we need. Today, we're going to learn that God reveals his plans for us through prayer. Um, I want to remind you the things that we've learned so far about prayer warriors. The first thing, does any remem anyone remember, is to thank God first. So prayer warriors thank God first. Then they pray for boldness to speak up for Jesus. And the third thing we've learned is to pray honestly and be upfront with God when we pray. So Today, we're going to add another one to our list. The last one, it'll be the fourth thing. Prayer warriors pray for God's will. Okay? Say that with me. Prayer warriors pray for God's will. Nice job. The Bible tells us that God is our creator, and he knew us before we were even born. And it's up to us to discover what that plan is. And prayer is one way... God reveals those plans to us. Of course, God isn't gonna get, going to all of a sudden give us this three-step plan for finding his will or going to talk, talk back to us and say, okay, for example, Miss Rachel, I want you to start a new ministry at church to feed the homeless. Here's who you talk to, here's who you recruit to help, and here's how you get it started. It's not really how that works, right? And it's not how prayer works either. God doesn't work like that and prayer doesn't work like that. Prayer is a way of getting to know God. The more we know God, the more we see things through his eyes. And the more we see things through God's eyes, including ourselves, the easier it will be for us to see what God's plan is for our lives. In today's scripture, pardon me, we're going to learn about Jesus when he was literally hours away from suffering, humiliation, and death. It's the crucifixion story, but it's right before that happened. Um, God, well, Jesus, it's, it, it takes place in the Garden of Gethsemane, right before um, the, the Roman guards came to, well, I'm not sure if they were Roman, actually. <laughs> the the people came to arrest him. 
and um, he was literally hours away from suffering, humiliation, and death, and he knew that it was God's will. That's the reason he had come to earth. Yet, listen to Jesus as he prays to God, his Father. So we're going to open up to Matthew 26. Matthew is in the New Testament, the first book of the New Testament. Matthew 26, so it's the big 26. Not one of the little ones. It's towards the end of Matthew, actually. 26, 36 through 46. And in my Bible, it says Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Sad is another word for sorrowful. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, not yet not as I will, but as you will. Now Jesus isn't talking about a literal cup. He's talking about um, this mission he's on. He, he is not really wanting to go through with it. He's really worried and sad and sorrowful. But then he says, but not my will. It's not my plan. It's your plan, God, and I'll do it for you. And then he returned to his disciples and found them sleepy. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. Yeah. And as I, as I was reading more right here, the people that came to arrest him were the chief priests and elders of the people, the, of the Israel, Israel, Israelite people. They were um, actually not the Romans. So that was my mistake earlier. Anyways, um, we talk a lot about how Jesus is God. He's God's son. He's perfect. He's never sinned. But in this passage in Matthew, we see that Jesus, we see Jesus at his like most human self. Because if you didn't know this, Jesus is both fully God and fully human. That's what makes him so amazing. And it's, it's a hard concept to understand or grasp, but it's true. In this, in this part or in this story we see Jesus as human as we'll see him he was afraid he feared pain and suffering that was going to be happening and he sounds a lot like we do when we're afraid doesn't he being like nervous and afraid and just worried right Jesus model, models many things we've talked about in this series we even though he, um, he knows what he has to do, or knew what he uh, what he had to do already. He was bold, remember, pray boldly, in asking God to take this cup from him. He said, he was honest and direct when he asked God if there's there was another way to save the world. Maybe there's a different way. But in the end, he knows that his father he knows his father's plan, his mind, and his plan. He might not like it, he might be scared, but as we kind of touched on a little earlier, he's willing to follow and obey because he knows God's heart. Not as I will, he said, but as you will, God. Jesus shows us that the more we know our Heavenly Father 
God, the more we'll see his will for our lives. And I'm not going to lie, this is a really challenging example to follow, but it's one we must follow if we want to fulfill God's plan, to live according to his will. So to wrap it up, I want to ask you, why do we communicate with one another? Why do we talk to other kids? Why do we talk to mom and dad or our guardians? Sometimes we talk to ask for things, maybe get on the same page, uh, make plans, coordinate, work together. But regardless of why we speak to other people, there's always one root reason for our communication. The more we talk and listen, the more familiar that other person will become. The better we know them, the better they know us. So it works both ways, right? Prayer is communication. It's communication to God. It's a two-way street, though, when, especially when we take time to listen. So sometimes we can get caught up in just talking, 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 and not letting God talk to us. We have to take time to talk and listen. It's a two-way street with communication and building relationship. It's a good reminder for all of us, I think. It's a chance to know our Creator, our God, our Savior, and thanking for God, God for His good works, asking Him to make us bold, and being honest or direct with our requests are helpful in getting to know Him, to, for getting to know God. The more we get to know someone, like I said, the more we understand that person. Um, for example, the more we talk to our parents or guardians, the more we know what to expect um, or what they expect from us because we communicate with them and vice versa. That goes back and forth, right? Um, uh, goes with our friends, too. We know what our friends expect of us if we communicate with them and are in dialogue with them. Relationship. The more we pray, the more we understand God's plan for us. God wants us to pray daily, to thank him, um, to submit our, our request, to tell him about what, uh, tell him what we need, seek his will, and to listen so that he can reply. The more we give God our time in prayer, the better we'll know him. It's a pretty easy concept, right? Slowly but surely, we'll get to know God's will so that we can serve him the way he wants. And I encourage you to ask God to reveal himself to you and his will. God will do great things through him, through you. And you just have to ask him. You just have to be in dialogue with him. Um, our memory verse, again, comes from Colossians 4, 2, and it says, Give a lot of time and effort to prayer. Always be watchful and thankful. It's important to pray. Prayer warriors thank God first. They pray boldly. They pray, pray honestly, and they're upfront with God. And um, they pray to understand God's will. We're going to pray right now. Um, so if you could bow your heads and close your eyes with me, that'd be awesome. And we're just going to pray. Um, yeah, we're going to pray. Dear God, we pray. Lord Jesus, that you would show us your will for our lives. Please speak to us when we pray. Help us to listen and not only talk the whole time. Give us humble hearts, Lord, to do your will for our lives. And please help us to hear you when, you, when we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Well, that's the end of our lesson today. And actually, that wraps up our prayer warriors um, series. Our next series starts next week and it's called Donuts. It's um, called Donuts and I'm not going to lie, every time I was working on our lesson notes, I was like wanting to eat donuts. But you'll find out more about this donut series next week. Talk to you later. See ya.